In my line of work, every once in a while I have a chance to witness a player that is destined to become truly great. When I say truly great, I mean that player has the ability to change the football landscape in his position for his junior high, high school, college, and in some cases the NFL. I always hear people or players say things like, I'm going to the league, or I'm D1 bounce, son, or my athlete or son runs a laser time 4 5 40 like it's nothing. The players and parents that talk like this, nine times out of ten, don't walk like this. The select few players that I have been around in my playing and coaching career that I could tell immediately were very special were normally some of the quietest guys to be around. No need for major talk on their part. No need to pump themselves up in front of others. No, these players walk with a calm confidence about them that is more powerful than any cheap, cocky comment that's easy to throw around. My two guests on the podcast today are those special types of players that I'm talking about. They are not the types of guys that will tell you how great they are, but from a professional standpoint, I certainly will. I met Steel High School QB Xavier Martin and wide receiver CJ Williams almost two years ago in San Antonio. I was training then Steel QB LG Williams and getting him prepared for his recent invite to Nike's Elite 11 Quarterback Challenge, which is the most prestigious invite-only quarterback competition on the planet. Earning a spot and then performing well at Elite 11 can send a quarterback's college recruiting process into the stratosphere. One day, LG's dad, Greg, brought his son, CJ, who was a freshman at the time, to come out and catch. He also brought out another younger freshman, who I assumed was also going to catch for LG. Greg introduced me to Xavier Martin and told me he wanted to take a good look at him at QB and give him my honest evaluation. Xavier would be going into his sophomore year at Steele as LG's backup the following season. And if I liked what I saw, more importantly, if I liked Xavier, maybe we could train as well. At that time, LG Williams was the biggest name in Central Texas football. Nike had named him one of their top 30 QBs in the nation. He would soon go on to commit to Texas State University, and I was really just focused on my game plan for him. I couldn't have imagined in my wildest dreams what I was about to see that day from two athletes other than LG. The first thing I noticed about CJ and Xavier was that they were very quiet. But that's how LG was when I first started working with him, so I, I didn't think much of it. As I started going through our warm-up routine with LG, I noticed how meticulous CJ was about everything. Shoes were laced up tight, multicolored socks were pulled up just right, his socks and shorts were sleek and athletic looking, solid white receiver gloves, and he had a fresh haircut. You can look at this dude and think, athlete. But it wasn't just his appearance. He had a very specific way that he warmed up. You can tell that he had a routine and stuck to it. For instance, even when he was catching from a stationary position, he pumped his arms and hands as if he was coming out of his breaks preparing to catch a ball. You don't really see disciplined freshmen with awesome habits like this. Our sessions normally ran an hour and a half to two hours, and I'm pretty positive he only dropped like two or three balls the entire session. All of his routes were run full speed, and he was so crisp in and out of his breaks. Like I said, not a normal thing for a freshman. Xavier was a little different. Ever since I've known Xavier, my man has always shown up to practice or meetings in a cutoff shirt. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I went through a period of about eight years where I cut the sleeves off of all my shirts. You work hard on the guns and you just got to let them breathe. My dad used to get so upset with me and tell me I was ruining perfectly good shirts. Who would have thought that at the age of 33, I now tell kids the exact same thing that my dad used to tell me. What a trip. Anyway, Xavier had the look of an athlete as well, but when I started to put him through various footwork and throwing drills, he wasn't really moving the way you want a quarterback to move. Like I said, he was athletic. He just hadn't learned all the dance steps that go along with being a complete QB. There was a moment in the practice, though, that I'll never forget. We were throwing 20-yard out routes to the right side of the field from the left hash. This is what the scouts like to call an NFL throw. Normally, the guys that can sling this route with accuracy and velocity can make every throw on the field. LG was up first and easily completed the pass. When it was Xavier's turn to throw the route, he rushed through his drop, didn't have his feet totally set, but proceeded to throw a rocket on the money to CJ. I've been around the top NFL and college quarterbacks in the game, and I've seen them throw up close. Xavier's pass was better than what some of those guys can do. I walked over to Greg Williams and said, X just threw an NFL ball and his feet weren't even right. This kid is going to be able to play college football anywhere he wants in the country. I can't wait to go to work with him. 
Greg just started laughing. As I've had the opportunity to work with X over the last two years, he has grown into one of the most complete high school quarterbacks in the country. And apparently colleges have agreed because he is at the top of almost every major D1 program's list. And this summer, Xavier committed to play quarterback for Cliff Kingsbury at Texas Tech University. Like I said before, special. On episode number six of Spinning It, I have the opportunity of sitting down with Xavier Martin and C.J. Williams of the number four state-ranked Steel Knights. In our conversation, we discuss what it's like to grow up in Cibolo, Texas, playing for the national powerhouse football program of Steel High School, off-season training regimens, the college football recruiting process, and the great expectations of their 2015 season. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy my conversation with Xavier Martin and C.J. Williams. Step inside, walk this way, you and me, babe. Hey, hey! Okay, I think we're good. What's up, guys? I got two special guests in the studio today. Steel Knights, quarterback Xavier Martin, wide receiver C.J. Williams. What's happening, guys? I'm doing good. Get up in that mic, make some love to it. Yes, sir. What's up, Xavier? What's happening? Nothing really. Just getting ready for playoffs pretty nice. soon. Nice. Yeah, we were we were just finished talking about uh, what the summer schedule is going to look like for for next year. What camps we're going to be visiting. What schools we're going to. All that good stuff. Having fun. And uh, we've been discussing bye week. They're the bye week for the Knights. We're nine and zero, right? Eight and zero. What's this? Nine and zero. Nine and zero right now. If you haven't had a chance to watch these dudes, you got to check them out. Um, I picked them for going to state at the beginning of the year. Um, I think that's what's going to happen. We took it to the uh, quarterfinals, quarterfinals last year, semifinals, semifinals last semifinals, year. The top yeah, four um, could, should have made it to the finals. Um, both you guys made big time catches. You two, you made a big time catch yes, X sir. in that game. That was big. Um, so I see you guys. I see you guys winning it again. I mean, winning it this year is going to be big. And the last time Steel won state was. 2007? 2010. 2010. 2010. Yeah. Was Tommy the quarterback then? Who yeah. was the quarterback? Yeah. He, he went to state twice, and he won his junior year and lost his senior year. Nice. Um, Tommy Armstrong, University of Nebraska. All Steele does is produce them athletes. All going to college. I love it. Um, so we talked about this a little earlier. Say it again, though. Your favorite thing about the bye week. Just being able to rest, not getting yelled at for everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, the coaches are a lot more relaxed, and you get to sleep and rest your legs. Yeah, yeah. I think my favorite thing about bye week was coaches weren't on edge. You know, normally during the week, coaches are always kind of on edge a little bit or a lot of bit, like my coaches were, especially in college. So bye week, it almost seemed like you know you're still having fun playing football, but. With without that pressure that normally comes like, with it, usually practice like keep going. Usually practice like fourteen, fifteen periods, which is every period is five minutes. But this week we had practice was only nine periods every day, and it was it was great. Love it. And then Thursday and Friday we didn't practice. Monday we didn't practice. What, how many uh, periods? Five minutes long, or it depends on the period. Yeah, five minutes long. That's, oh man, that's what's up right there. So we practice for like forty-five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I told all my quarterbacks before Halloween, behave, make smart decisions. See your boy JT Barrett. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you guys have a spotlight on you, especially in high school In high school, you guys got a spotlight on too. You got to, especially with Twitter and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Now you just, you're, you're not a normal student, you're student athlete. And it's not like you're at podunk high school. You're at steel at a big time place where people are just waiting for you to mess up. So if you you guys both want to go big places um, in college, so you just got to be got to be careful about who you surround yourself with and all that stuff. On the screen, we got Saints and Giants going right now. I'm rooting Saints. I know CJ said Saints earlier. X, who you got? I don't know. It's uh, 28, 28 right now. Third quarter, 10:58. That's a good game. I think I want the Giants to win just so I can see Odell Beckham dance. No, those are always great. What is the deal with – okay, so ODB. ODB ruined all my quarterbacks because now when they play catch with each other, they all try to do one-handed catches. <laughs> and obviously they're not Odell Beckham, so they drop the ball all the time and it just wastes 
time. I feel like as a quarterback, I can catch only. I can only catch one handed. I can't catch two. I don't know why. <clears throat> yeah, right. <laughs> That's all they do at practice. Try to catch one hand. It's craziness. I mean, if you're a receiver, okay, I understand practicing that. But as a quarterback, it, it just wastes time. Um, and the crazy thing is, normally I ask a kid, "What's your who's your favorite quarterback?" You know, I'll get Russell Wilson, Peyton Manning, Drew, uh, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, all that stuff. Now I'm getting like people saying Odell Beckham. I was like, "But you're a quarterback." Yeah, he's my favorite player though. <laughs> um, what's the deal? What's the deal? I mean, besides the one one handed catch, you just got you like his swag, or what's the deal? Yeah, I think it's how he carries himself. Like he just he seems like a chill person. Like somebody somebody people want to be around. Yeah, honestly, problem. He's confident. Yeah. He's confident too. I like that. Um, yeah, like I said once again, Xavier Martin, C.J. Williams in the studio. We're having some fun today. Um, let's talk about uh, normally the format in the show is where you grew up. And uh, kind of the first sport that you started playing. So, CJ, start with you. CJ, real quick, brother of my man, LG Williams, who's at Texas State right now. But CJ Williams is his own man, too. Talk to me. Where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Louisiana. That's where I was born. Where? In Alexandria. Uh, so, North Louisiana. Mm-hmm. The boot. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And my, we're military, so we've been moving around a lot. Yeah. But I started playing football when I was at least, like, four but I started off playing flag football because I used to be scared to play tackle. Yeah. Because I saw all the injuries and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the first time I went to play uh, tackle football, my cousin, he used to play for the Jets at the time. So, I got Give him a shout out. What's his name? His name's DJ. D- DJ what? You don't know your cousin's last name? <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is I like... Back then. This is like the Manny Harris conversation. <laughs> like, I was asking Manny Harris all sorts of things and making references, and he was like... I don't know what any of that means. Like you make me feel old, dude. Okay, so your cousin who played for the Jets, who you don't know his name, um, at four years old you started playing flag football. Dude, yeah. that's pretty young. Yeah. Were you balling? Yeah, we went. It was like this like tournament, and it was in like this big stadium. It was like a college stadium. I can't remember the because it, it was young. How like, uh, UL Monroe maybe up there or? Uh, possibly. Yeah. If they, they've got a bigger stadium. Or maybe in Ruston, they got Louisiana Tech. Those are both big stadiums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, I started playing flag, and then... Did you play on your brother's team, or were yeah, you guys on the same team? Them, yeah. Same and we you, had a, mini, a bunch of different teams we played for. You knew you wanted to play uh, receiver? Yeah, so, I started off playing running back, actually. Okay. And then in seventh grade, that's when they moved me to uh, receiver because we had so, many, so much depth at running back. Yeah. Very cool. What was, okay, in flag football, do you remember your first number? 32. 32. Why'd you pick it? Because that's what number my cousin was when he played for the Jets. The cousin who you don't know his name? Yeah. Nice. Give those, toss those headphones over to X. We're sharing some microphones and headphones right now, guys. X, where did you grow up? I grew up in San Antonio. Well, oh, okay. I grew up in Cibolo, actually. I lived in San Antonio until I was three, then I moved to Cibolo. So you're local. Yeah. Local product. When did you first start playing sports? I started playing basketball whenever I was three. And then... Three? Yeah. That was my that was then, my main sport up until seventh grade. I didn't really start playing football like that until maybe I was in fifth grade. Yeah. And then I started off as a running back whenever I played. Wait up, real quick. I'm, I'm baffled about you started playing basketball when you were three. <laughs> I averaged 16 points a game, too. <laughs> yeah, right. They're all layup, or layups, but... I didn't even know a three-year-old could, like, dribble a basketball. Mm-hmm. I played for St. Monica. Okay. This sounds like a made-up story, but I'll go with it. <laughs> okay. Um, so your basketball was your first sport mm-hmm. and football. And then football came after. Were those the two sports that you normally played? Yeah. Basketball is still my favorite sport up until eighth grade, maybe. Okay. Or ninth grade, honestly. Uh-huh. And then I played running back at first, and then I got – we didn't – we had a lot of depth at running back, like CJ said, and then – uh, we needed a quarterback for B team, so I played B team quarterback. But then they realized I could run it. Playing that throw. B team, <laughs> B, this is a B team free zone, man. They realized I could run and throw, so then they moved me up to starting A team quarterback. And then that's when I just what grade was this? Seventh grade. Oh, we gonna get back to that fifth grade. You said fifth grade. You started playing football. Was this flag football? What was this? Oh no, I played tackle. I tackle. Played, what yeah, was the What was the name of the team? The BVA Buffaloes. The what? The Buffaloes. The Buffaloes. Yeah. Okay, okay. The Buffs. Where did you guys play home games at? Um, was it in like Cibolo Shirts was, area? Yeah, it was. In, it was 
on the tennis fields behind Clemens. Oh, okay. I know exactly where that's at. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, real quick for um, everyone listening, you don't know um, uh, kind of where we're talking about. Cibolo shirts, that whole area is northeast of San Antonio. Uh, it's kind of north of Judson. Um, it's off of, uh, you know, kind of off to the right of 35. It's the hotbed of where, where the top athletes, I think, in the state of Texas are right now. You've got uh, you guys, Clemens, Judson, then you go up to Smithson Valley, that whole area up there, um, super strong athletes. Okay, so you play tackle football. What, what position were you playing in fifth grade? Running back. Running back. What was your first number? I think my first number was it was 12. 12. Why'd you pick 12? Honestly, I just chose it. Okay. There's no reason behind it. Just yeah. picked it. You Tom Brady fan? Mm, no, not really? Not really. Not really. Okay, <laughs> just pick 12. Cool. Um, CJ, what other sports did you play besides um, football? Uh, I used to run track. Okay. I used to play basketball a little bit, but I never really liked basketball. Your first your your first thing was football. That was your that was your love. Yeah. Um, what was it about football that, that kind of – I'll tell you why I fell in love with football. Um – like there, I, th- I think I was like in f- third or fourth grade, and there was one summer where I went out with my friends. And I think we played football every day, um, and I didn't like playing receiver because I had to wait, and I didn't always get the ball thrown to me. I said I want to play quarterback because I can get the ball in my hands every <laughs> single time. Um, but yeah, that I think third or fourth grade summer, and I played football every day, and that's when I really, really fell in love. What was your pool for football? Uh, I think it was just watching it on TV, honestly. Yeah. Like, and I heard the stories about my dad playing football too. Yeah, yeah. He used um, to play like running back and linebacker. Nice. If you have not met Greg Williams, Greg Williams, shout out right now. You're overseas right now. We love you, dude. Um, my man Greg is built like a bowling ball. I can imagine that dude just running people over left and right. Um, okay. Uh, X, what was the pull for you? Honestly, I think it was how many, how much fun I had whenever I would be in practice, like with all my friends and whatnot. Yeah. I played football in the streets probably, like just like you, all yeah. the time with yeah. one of my friends. And then after that, I just fell in love with it whenever I started playing it. Yeah. We used to play in the streets all the time, but we ruined like so many footballs. Leather footballs in the streets do not mix. And then there was always one kid who tripped and fell and tore his legs yeah, up. That was always me. Yeah. No, no, well, <laughs> our kids in our neighborhood would go cry to their mom, and then we'd all get in trouble for it was craziness. Um, I would call out your name, and I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to put you on blast though. But you know who I'm talking about, <laughs> Cry Baby. Um, so then uh, there was a field that kind of opened up by our house. I, I'm from Kingsville, Texas, and Kingsville there's hay bales um horses uh, we had a, like all that stuff in our neighborhood so we had a, a good amount of space where we could play where we could play ball okay um what are the sports besides thing x just yawned you guys are watching this on youtube <laughs> my man just yawned right now killing me um it's bye week we're taking it easy what uh what other sports did you play um i played track too but I hate track. Yeah. I'm forced to still run it, though. Yeah. So. Well, you guys are crushing it in track, though, yeah. right? Yeah. You My get, dad makes me do it, though. I think it's great um, because it, it helps you stay in shape, one. helps you work on your form and speed, too. And you guys are both speed guests. you got to be able to run, um, do your thing. It's uh, It'll definitely pay off. Okay. So we make the transition where – well, CJ, okay, wait first. You were in Louisiana, and you guys are a military family. What branch of the military? Army. Army. Okay. Where did you live after that? After we moved from Louisiana, we went to Hawaii. Hawaii. And lived over there. How long? For three years. How old were you when you did that? I I was at least like two, I think. Oh, okay. Three. Okay. Young. Yeah. So then we moved to White House, Texas. Where's that at? I was young then. White too. House, Texas. Never heard of that. Yeah. And then we moved to Oklahoma in Lawton, Texas. Like it's, it's right outside of like Wichita Falls. It's not okay. far. Okay. Okay. And then we moved back here to Texas, and we've been here ever since then. Well, it's weird because I remember when I first talked to LG and Greg, when they were calling me, it was with a Hawaii number. Yeah. Yeah. So they so, still had like their did the, uh, 
that was crazy, you know. Um, so I, at, when I saw that, I kind of said, okay, there must be kind of a military family then at one point because my dad was military as well, and they lived, they were stationed in Hawaii when for about three years too. Um, well, cool. All right, so you're moving around. Is it tough being a military kid and moving around and making new friends, or how? What, what's that experience like? Yeah, it's, it's kind of tough because you don't really have like stable friends. You're always making new friends, but I guess it's kind of good too. Yeah, always meeting new people, but. It's just kind of tough moving from school to school, team to team, and all that. Sure. Um, okay, so when do you guys make the move back to to Cibolo? How old were you? Uh, we moved here in six when I was in sixth grade. Okay, and then been here ever since. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, that's cool. You're not moving around here in high school or anything like that. Uh, it's kind of easier, I think, when you're younger. Um, cool. Make the move sixth grade. Um, what middle schools were we going to, fellas? Doby. Doby. Yeah. Doby, big feeder school into steel. What's the mascot at Doby? The Cougars. The Cougars. What's the colors at Doby? Black, white, and gold. Black, white, and gold. I like it. Um, I like that up there. Check that out. That was my high school colors. Yeah. but uh, We had gold, but we didn't ever wear it. Oh, what? Not even like a little trim like or something? No. Oh, got to utilize that. I, I love know. that gold. Um, okay. So you're at Doby. What um what was your first number in middle school? Um, for it was seven, and then oh, I got to number. practice late one day, so somebody took that number. So then I was like, seven's my favorite number, and then two is my other favorite number. So I multiplied together, and I got fourteen. Okay. <laughs> and then after after the football season was over, when I played on the Rattlers, I was like, fourteen's ugly, so I just knocked the one off, and I became four. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he liked seven. <clears throat> he showed up to practice late. Someone got his seven jersey. He liked the number two. Mm-hmm. So why didn't you take two? Someone else already had yeah, two? Yeah, someone had it. So then he multiplied. What happens if you would have added them together? <laughs> then you had nine. Nine, yeah. He'd be rolling nine. Mm, I, don't, I don't think I like that one. He didn't like nine. Okay. <laughs> he multiplied the two times the seven, got to 14, played with the Rattlers. Now explain what the Rattlers are. The Reagan, or the junior Rattlers, that they had, it was like pretty much like the Buffaloes for... Yeah, it's junior football. Nights, yeah. Is that Typha or what is that? It's NYS. It's it NYS. Okay, yeah, because I know I've got some kids who, who, have, who have played it, and I think the Rattlers are now like the Barons now. I think that's their, mm-hmm. that's their field. Actually, one of their coaches still kind of reaches out to me when you guys, when you guys do well because um, there's, some, there's some other kids that uh, kind of have some potential like you that either play for the Barons or for the Rattlers at one point. Um, okay, cool. So, and then you got to four. You got to four. Were you four in seventh grade? No, I was four in eighth grade. Okay, so you were seven and then four? Yes. Nope. Okay, I was seven, seven 14, then four. Okay, very good. I was 19 for a day, 10, and stayed 10 through middle school. What about you, CJ? Uh, seventh grade, I was number one. Number one. Like I always say, that's a big boy number. If you're going to rock the, the number one, you better be confident. Yeah, okay. I only picked it because of the table on Austin. Beast. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. He reminds me of myself. Okay, cool. Uh, so you saying you can be a first round draft pick? Yeah. That's, hey, that's <laughs> what's up. I like it. I like it. You heard it first. I got dudes that very well could be could be drafted into the NFL um, and are going to play big time college football. It's exciting. Um, also, my first two high school guests on the show. I'm loving it, man. We got a quarterback receiver duo. What about eighth grade? What number were you? Eighth grade, I switched to number six. Why'd you make the switch? D'Anthony. That's whenever D'Anthony uh, got to Oregon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so your game breakers that you follow, you want to get that number. Okay. Um, what you were at Adobe too? Mm-hmm. So you guys were on the same team? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How'd you do? Um, did you guys hit it off pretty quick or what? He didn't like me at first. What? Yeah. Why not? A girlfriend. No, he used to I, steal, I steal my sandwiches food. at yeah. lunch. I was take his food. Dude, what's up with that? Like, would you do it, like, kind of covertly, or would you do it, like, just give me a sandwich? No, like, he would just grab it and take a bite of it and, like, leave. And I didn't want to eat after he bit it, so I just let him have it. Yeah, pretty much. Dang, that's a good racket. To, I mean, yeah. take a bite, and he's like, no, nah, I don't want it anymore. But then we got on the Junior Rattlers, and we became best friends. Okay. Uh, Was the Junior Rattlers the same year, seventh grade? Yes. So did you stop eating his sandwiches then? Yeah. Eventually. Okay. And see that like okay, so that's a that's words of wisdom for you guys. If you want to be buddies with your receivers or, or other players on your team, don't eat their food. Don't take bites out of their sandwich. 
Um, how did your first, how did y'all's first year at Adobe go? It went good. That's whenever I started on the scrimmage on B team. Oh, that's and right. Then, okay. Yeah, I was uh-huh. on the scrimmage on B team, and then I scored all the touchdowns. So then they moved me up to A team, and mm-hmm. I was starting. Nice. And then we went undefeated and unscored on. We were like 316 points to zero. Wow. The whole year. Yeah. That's uh, so district champ, obviously. Yeah. That's big boy stuff. I went undefeated my uh, seventh grade year. No big deal. <laughs> district champs, no big deal. Um, okay. Oh, you remember any type of stats from it? Or an estimate no or anything nope. like that? You were running and throwing touchdowns. I think I was just running back then. Just running. Yeah, okay. I, I could not throw back then. That one punt. Oh, was yeah. A the, fake punt. It was a fake punt I threw and he dove for it. And it was okay. Alive. If he wasn't throwing much, then were you playing running back? I was playing receiver then. Oh, receiver. He so. might have had more touchdown passes than me. Real, oh, like the toss passes or? It was like a receiver pass. Yeah. Reverse pass. And you could spin it pretty good, dude. I threw yeah. yeah. CJ spins it pretty well. <laughs> uh, okay. Undefeated in seventh grade at Adobe. Eighth grade Adobe. Now we're the big dogs on campus. Um, oh, that's whenever I switched to Corbett because I knew I was going to go to Clemens. Oh, okay. Okay. So you went over to Corbett. Um, did that hurt the relationship? What happened here between no, you two? That's, that's pretty much one of the main reasons I moved back to Still because I really only talked to people from Still. Oh, I got you. I, I got you. I didn't really have any that many friends at Clemens because they were so different. Uh huh. How they acted like I didn't like the people at Clemens as much. Why did you make the move over to? You went to Corbett. Mm-hmm. Why did you make the move over to Corbett? Because we got rezoned and I, oh, was, okay. I was in the district to go to Clemens, so there's no point in waiting at Dobie and then having to make new friends. Sure. Whenever I got to high school. What 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 do you think the difference was um, between Dobie and uh, and Corbett? Like in the athletic program, maybe. There weren't many athletes. <laughs> at all at Corbett not at all no so how'd you guys do in 8th grade then we went we should have went undefeated we went 5-3 and three. every game that we lost we lost in like the last 2 seconds did you lose Adobe it was a scrimmage, was a scrimmage. oh but I, I, I say won. we won no. we won oh okay we got some disagreement here <laughs> we won okay um why, that's a rivalry why, why wouldn't you guys not play each other cause it's a rivalry cause we were like sister schools so yeah. we weren't like actually how Clemens and Still are right Yeah, now. yeah. We're not. We weren't really in the district before. Oh, okay. Nice. I got you. Um, so he's gone. How'd you do in eighth grade? We did pretty good. Just the same as last year, except we. That's the year we finally got scored on, and we we're all angry. You're all angry. Yeah. That was like the first time we got scored on ever. Okay. And Dobie. But you, you guys went undefeated again? Yeah, we were still undefeated. Back to back district yeah. champs. In eighth grade, we lost one game. Last play, last play, last game, last play of the game. It was on a toss pass. I was playing, me and my boy were playing safety, free safety and strong safety. We both went up, tipped the ball. And I just remember, I can remember it plain as day, laying on the ground and watching this guy catch it and run off into the end zone. <laughs> and our undefeated season is gone, man. There's another um, Rattlers, junior Rattlers quarterback, Isaiah Moore. He's at uh, Tex Hill. He's going to feed into Johnson. And he just finished going undefeated back to back at uh, at Tex Hill. They feed him to Johnson. He's good. He's going to be very talented. He's going to be a good player for Johnson. Uh, okay, so we just finished up with middle school. We're getting bigger, stronger, faster. At this point, are you guys doing any type of football camps? Are you doing any type of speed and conditioning, strength? What what's it like? Uh, we started going to Athletic Republic. Okay. Yeah. 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 Eighth grade. A lot of the steel guys go out there, or the people from that area go out there, right? Mm-hmm. What's that all about? Really just a speed thing. Okay. Get you faster. There's a lot of, like, treadmill, plyo, stuff like that. Cool. And it helped you guys out? I think so, yeah. Nice. I wish we would have had that kind of stuff when I was in middle school or, or even younger than that. I mean, I was from a small town. You guys got a lot more to choose from, but we didn't have quarterback coaches. We didn't have strength trainers, speed trainers, anything like that. That's why, like, when I see you guys now, you guys should be – better athletes than us you know you guys should be better football players because you got all these like if i wanted to learn about quarterback i had to like either rent a vhs tape mm-hmm. you know what a vhs tape is yeah. yes <laughs> or like rent a book from the public library or something like that on how to be a quarterback it was it was pretty crazy um but uh, okay cool so we finished up middle school we're going to athletic republic getting some work in now we're going to steel and are you guys growing up like kind of watching steel football games at that time Whenever I first moved here, that's whenever uh, Malcolm. Never we played Madison, and that's where I first heard of Malcolm Brown, and he had like he went off that game. Malcolm Brown, shout out University of Texas, won a state championship at Steel. He's with the Rams now. Yeah, he's he with the with the Rams. Very cool. Um, 
I remember watching watching varsity guys play when I was either younger or in middle school, and just thinking of these guys like as like as like they're in the NFL, man. Like I, I had so much respect for them, and I just thought they were awesome. What's what's it like to know that you're getting ready to enter a program that uh, is so strong and has the tradition of like sending guys to college? What's it like? I didn't even look at it as like that because I would my still my main sport was basketball. Oh, uh, okay. Like, I would play select basketball like during the summers and whatnot. Yeah, I remember he said he was three and averaging sixteen points a game. I was <laughs> yeah, nice. right. Whenever we got to seventh grade, how many? You think 30 points a game, maybe? Off from my assist. <laughs> oh. Uh, the one passing the ball. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hilarious. So you didn't look at it that way. You were Your first sport was still basketball. Mm-hmm. Really? Until I started playing quarterback, really. Ah, Manny Harris is the same way. He was like a basketball guy. He started off. That's so funny. I was terrible at basketball. <laughs> and I, I, like I told Manny, I was like, I thought I was going to be really good, too. No, I was not good. Um, now I'm, I'm terrible now. Yeah. Every shot is over because I'm just so, I'm so used to leading people. So whenever I shoot, it's like I'm leading the basketball goal. Uh, so it's, it's always air ball. I couldn't dribble with my left hand. I was terrible. So if you force me to go left, I was done. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so you're making this move up into Steel High School. You're a freshman. What is it like being a freshman at Steel High School? Freshman year, it was it was like kind of tough because they if they know you're you have potential to play early, mm-hmm. they like try to get you right. So they're like always constantly yelling and like just trying to get you mentally tough, basically. Sure. So like, but my freshman year, that I was at a football camp, the steel camp, mm-hmm. and I ended up breaking my ankle, so I didn't really get to play. Mm, I didn't know that. Yep. Well, you probably had it a little easier because your brother was what two years older than you, mm-hmm. two years older than you, so he was kind of already going through it. So. You probably heard stories from him, saw him do stuff, so you're probably a little more familiar with it. Then, what about you? That's whenever I was still at Clemens. Yeah. And then oh, I you were at Clemens for one year. No, I was there for maybe three months, and then uh, okay. I transferred to Steel. Get transferred to Steel. Gotcha. Well, um, okay. Um, so you got to Steel. When did you get to Steel? Um, in January. In January. So it's like first semester over at yeah. Clemens, then you got to Steel. Okay. So you're happy to be at Steel. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Happy to be at Steel. What is the first? Okay, um, first, what was your freshman year like? Well, how'd y'all do? Uh, we we did good. We were undefeated, undefeated still. Dang, dude! So in three years, you didn't lose one game. Mm-hmm. That's big time. Okay, what about you guys? How'd you guys do at uh, Clemens? Yeah, we were undefeated too. Do y'all not play each other? No, we no. didn't play each other at the time. Oh, because Clemens was a, a, yeah. a division lower, right? Mm-hmm. Y'all should still play each other like in the preseason because it's like y'all are like a three miles away from each other it's a hop skip and a jump wow you guys don't lose games that's what i'm talking about and you're still carrying you know, undefeated this year okay so you get over to x gets over to clement uh, to um steel and it's our first spring of being able to play spring football of getting into a really good strength and conditioning program what's that first spring like for you guys mm. It was it was good. Was Coach Linhoff the coach at that point? Yes. Okay, Coach, and he it's his first year, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. So he's a young coach. He's getting fired up. Like this is his kind of program now. Yeah. What's what's that semester that that spring semester like for you guys? It was fun for me because it was like my first time in the forever being able to play with my brother again. So. Yeah. How what, what's that dynamic like? Like I had a sister and she was four years younger than me. The closest we ever got to doing anything together was I coached her in powder puff. Um, when she, when I was a fret and we won, hey, we won that game, <laughs> holding it down. Um, I was the coach. She was the quarterback for a little while, but then I moved her over to free safety and blitzed her all game, and she had like five sacks. Shout out to my sister Celeste. Um, anyway, uh, so what's the dynamic like being able to play football with your brother? Well, it's like we already have like chemistry because we used to always go in the front yard and like toss the ball around and stuff. So. And he was able to, he was able to like teach me the, uh, the offense too. So I was able to learn the offense more. That's cool. Too, so. Yeah. Um, what y'all's relationship like? I mean, I obviously work with you guys, so I I, I can kind of have an outside perspective. Like you guys are pretty close, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, my sister, she's one of my best friends. Um, and it was funny growing up. It wasn't like that at first because she was just like 
my little sister who was always kind of following me around and wanting to do stuff. But yeah, like we're best friends now. So you got any siblings? I have an older sister. Older sister. How old is she? 22. 22. She, where she live? She lives in Kentucky, but she pretty much lives here. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's that all about? She, she'll go down to Kentucky for maybe two weeks and then she'll come back for three months. Like she, she went to Kentucky four weeks ago. Okay. She came back two weeks ago, went back last week and came back this week. And now she's here till December. So Dang. Like she, she's always here. She's getting after it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so you're playing with your brother. You got a strong relationship with your brother. Um, you know, at one point he's the, he's the, well, he was stepping up to be the man that year. Right. Mm, yeah. yeah and still, his, year started. that's right. Um, and I'm trying to think, okay, you guys are, this is the first, this is the first time I think I met you guys. Um, cause I'd, LG and I had been talking a little bit, and then your dad called me about possibly um, doing some stuff with LG. And you always, CJ normally always came out for for training when LG came out for training to to catch for him. And the one thing I noticed about you right off the bat was, well, you you didn't, huh? Oh, I thought you were gonna say the colors. What about the colors? About how he used to always wear colored yeah. socks and cleats. On That's for sure. You know, he had one pair of like <laughs> like with penguins on it, or or oh, like yeah. like a, a penguins, and the one that was like a tuxedo type of sock. That's the thing. Here, real quick, we'll talk about socks on this podcast. When I was in high school, and even now, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my foot up here. That's what we rock. No shows, baby, all day long. If anything goes up over my ankle. I feel weak. I feel like like I'm a non-athlete when I do that. Um, that's how we wore them, like in the games too, in college and high school. We wore high socks sometimes, but mostly low socks. And now I come out to practice. Like I had Jacob Delgado out this morning, and Jacob's wearing like these pink and neon green, and ne- like looked like an Easter egg exploded on his on his ankles. I'm just looking at him like, and he wears crazy socks like that. What is the what's the deal with that? What's the deal with crazy socks? Oh, that's him. oh, you don't do crazy socks? What's the deal with crazy socks, CJ? I mean, it just gets you noticed easier. Like, okay. Whenever I go to camps, that's what I always wear. Oh, that's a good idea. I, and that's something that I tell my quarterbacks to do. I told LG, I'm going to tell Xavier when he's going through this thing. You've got to, like, any anything that will pull you out of a crowd, whether it's crazy socks or if you're wearing short sleeve stuff at a camp, make sure you wear a long sleeve, bright colored shirt or something like that, that they can pick you out really quickly. But... Okay, so yeah, I get you know it's at camps, but you rock that stuff to school too, I'm sure, right? Yeah. But what's so that's what's that all about? It's just to be different, I guess. Okay. I like being wearing what everyone else is wearing. Okay. I just wear my do my own thing. Well, and I also think like you're a guy that that doesn't like speak out a lot, so that might be a way of like you kind of expressing your expressing yourself a little bit, huh? How many pairs of socks do you think you have? Ooh. Took a, a lot. took yeah. a deep breath, like over fifty. Probably more, probably more than that. Wow, I guess I gotta sharpen up my sock game. When we were in San Diego, I got some San Diego. My, my buddy Kurt, he works for the San Diego Padres, hooked me up with um, some um, San Diego Padres kind of long um, socks, and I wore them when I was at USC. And I got like all sorts of like love for them. And then a couple of my quarterbacks here were like, I see you rocking those long socks. Okay. I guess we'll, I guess we'll rock them a little bit. (laughs) Um, Okay, cool. We're talking sock game. Anyway. So I met you, I met you, you started coming out with LG and I remember it was like maybe LG's fourth or fifth time out and Greg bought you out X to come out and play. And he was like, Put the switch the headphones on real quick. We're like I said, we're switching headphones back and forth. That's how we do it here. I got to get a third pair. Um, so uh, Greg, LG's dad, brings um, Xavier out, and he said, "Hey, uh, I want you to take a look at this kid and tell me what you think." I said, "Cool." So we started putting LG, I mean uh, X, through some of the same drills LG was doing. And my first thing right off the bat, my first thoughts were, "Okay, obviously he's an athlete." Um, I feel like he has the potential to, to do really big things, but I think he he's got to get he's got to he's got to be taught properly how to be a quarterback. You know, he needs to be taught on how to move properly, the right footwork. Like he, you need to know all the dance moves before yeah. you get out there. But once he gets that stuff, watch out. And I can still remember as plain as day, we were doing some deep play action passes 
Um, LG rears back and throws a beautiful, like, I don't know, like a 45 yard corner route. And then you came out, rushed your feet, like threw off balance and still threw like the same beautiful throw like that he did. And LG's an elite level quarterback. Um, he was a top 30 quarterback in the country when he was in high school. And when I saw that, I said, I looked over at your, at Greg, at, um, CJ's dad. And I said, Whoa, this guy is going to be special. So I knew right off the bat, and I said, I got to start working with, I got to start working with X because he's going to be special. Um, okay, so yeah, I met all you guys freshman year, and then you guys go into sophomore year. Obviously, LG is a starter, so you're taking receiver reps at this time. Well, second string quarterback and receiver reps. Gotcha. Second string quarterback, receiver reps. Um, and you guys have a great season, sophomore year. Talk about it. It was a fun season. It was more so learning than anything. Learning how, because LG taught me a lot. Sure. Like leadership wise, stuff like that. And then um, we we almost, we lost to DeSoto. And then every other team we were undefeated. We, For people who don't know, DeSoto's a power like Steel is. Like KD, like all the, DeSoto's one of those. Allen, DeSoto's one of those powers. And then we almost lost to Judson, but LG scored in the last 16 seconds. Yeah, that was a big game. And yeah. Judson, like you guys, went to the semifinals last year. So that whole area, crazy amount of, of uh, power. Well, let's talk about that real quick because I've been I've played behind some really special quarterbacks and have learned from them. And then I've played behind some other guys where I kind of thought, I'm better. I'm better than them. I need to be playing. But the guys that were better at me than that point – I really tried to take from their game. What What do you think you kind of learned from L, LG besides maybe on how to be a leader and all that kind of stuff? Um, footwork. Footwork. Yeah, I would yeah. watch. I would watch what he does all the time. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, what What was the biggest like adversity you guys had that year, sophomore year? Uh, I would say the O'Connor game because. The O'Connor game, it was pouring. Down. I was there. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was pouring down rain, and we were at one point we were down, and that was like one of our closest games starting off the season. So yeah. It was it was that one and the Smithson Valley yeah, game. That's what I was gonna say. Smithson Valley. I don't remember that game. What happened? We in the first like three minutes we were losing twenty one to zero. Oh, that's right. What what happened? What was the deal with that? I think um, it was it was wet. And just turnovers, fun, yeah. like fumbles. Fumbles. Fumbles, yeah. three yeah. interceptions. So what happened? Okay, you down 21 nothing. What, what what was the comeback on that? We had a comeback in a lot of games. Yeah. Like every – it was pretty much every game we had a comeback. You know, I year. think I, I think that's good in some ways too because that, that – all those experiences probably help you from this year to where even though you haven't had to do any type of comebacks this year, yeah. you know, if you do have those experiences in the playoffs this year – You've already kind of experienced that yourselves last year, so you guys know how to kind of kind of work through that. Um, I remember this year we, it was the New Braunfels game, and we were all mad and whatnot, but we were winning thirty-eight to three. Yeah, but we were mad about how we were playing. So yeah, I feel like if we do play bad, we're gonna step it up because we don't. We hate if that was we punted four times that game, and that was the most we had punted all season combined. Yeah. And that was already the seventh game of the season. That that's how you can tell a team is is making that move from pretty good to great when you're winning a game thirty four to three or whatever it was, and you're upset with yeah. it, you know. And all I all of us were very mad. I love it. That's awesome. I I remember having games where we would win, and I would do I would do well. Like I'd throw multiple touchdowns, run for multiple touchdowns, but I'd get into film and be so upset about. Mm-hmm. Exactly. A couple of throws that I made that I wish I could have had back. A couple of reads on runs that I I should have, or a play call that I should have checked. And yeah, um, but I was kind of trying to hold myself to a higher standard and really take my game to another level. But that's how you know that the guys are serious. Yeah, because that New Brunswick game, I had through four touchdowns. This is was, this year. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was still mad that game, the whole game. Yeah, I think it's because the very first play, it should have been a touchdown to him, but I messed up the ball. And then after that. We went down. No, we punted that first possession, mm-hmm. and then I dislocated my shoulder. Oh, really? Then, this this season? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but I still went back in after they popped it in. And whatnot. Dude, beast, uh, beast mode. And then we went down. We scored, and then we kept scoring, but we weren't scoring how we should be. We 
the starters had punted three times all season combined, and then that game we had punted four, so we were just upset. Who's your punter? Brady. Shout out Brady. He was like, Brady. oh, thank you. I get to punt a little bit. <laughs> well, he's our running back. He's one oh, our he runs kid. too. Oh, okay. He's a running back too. Okay, gotcha. You know Tyler, uh, Vid, and MacArthur is their punter as well? Mm-hmm. He goes back there and punts on like that. You just like do it all, man. Yeah, I was supposed to be punter, but I didn't like punting, so I would I always mess up the punts on purpose whenever he makes me punt. So uh-huh. I yeah, I hate it. I'm, I'm trying to think if it was you. I know LG would come out there at practices and just sit there and punt and punt and yeah. punt. <laughs> did he punt too or not? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Did you punt too or, or was that just LG X? I, I was supposed to punt. Okay. But can you punt okay? Yeah, I can yeah. punt whenever yeah, I want right. to. When I want to. Can you really? Mm-hmm. Okay. He, he used to help me like whenever we would go to the field. Yeah. He would just punt to me so I'll learn. Oh. Get better at punt. I gotta time. see. I gotta see. When we when we train again, I gotta I gotta check you out. I wanna see. I wanna see what that punt looks like. I'm curious. We might have to put that on Instagram. See how that turns out. Just the first one. We'll see what happens. Um, who was the hardest team you guys played your sophomore year? Um, obviously, you had lost the losses against uh, Katie. Um, was that no Katie DeSoto? You had yeah. a tough games against O'Connor and Judson. I guess out of those four, what what was the hardest game? Who who had the most talent about? I guess DeSoto. DeSoto. They had the most talent, but Katie was the most sound, like fundamentally. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, DeSoto. Yeah, DeSoto and Katie both putting out college town all the time. What's it like to play on a team like Steel where – and you guys might not even realize it where it's not it's not a normal thing for a football pro, high school football program every year to put out guys to college, you know, put out – D1 guys, D1 FCS, D2 guys, multiple guys. That's not a that's not a regular thing, fellas. That didn't happen in my school. Like my senior year, I was one I was the only kid um to get a scholarship. The year after there's only one guy. It didn't I mean, do you guys realize the magnitude of that or it's just kind of natural? I mean, it's just kind of part of it for you guys. We don't I don't really realize it until I think about it, but Yeah. It's pretty cool how many people we do put out. Yeah, I mean, you guys are studs, but you guys have guys like teammates that are that are beasts too. Who's the Who's the dude that plays in that's going A and M? Mark Jackson. The when I saw him when you guys played O'Connor on TV, and I saw him drop back, pick their quarterback <laughs> off, and then run it for a touchdown. My jaw just dropped, and like normally I just post like quarterback stuff. I posted that immediately. <laughs> like, look at this ATH athlete. So, so impressive, that it was, guy. It was funny. One day, we were watching, I think we were just watching ESPN, and then I randomly see a picture of him on it. I'm like, why is he on ESPN right now? Wow. <laughs> I, I don't remember. It was, it might have been, oh, it was um the ESPN game, the, it was what a was high it? school game. Yeah, it was Bishop Gorman's yeah, game. Yeah, it was Ah, uh, okay, okay. And, and they then, were just showing him because he's, t- he's a top recruiter or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like I said, he's going to, going to A&M, SEC football. That's what's up. Um, okay, so then you guys finish up that sophomore year, um, make a heck of a run. Now we got confidence. X, you know now it's your program. You're taking it over. CJ, your brother's gone. Now you're the, the big Williams um, on campus. What's what's the mindset going into spring football and, and, and that summer moving forward? Both track guys, by the way. How'd your track season go um, sophomore year? Um, I went to state for the four by one. Mm-hmm. I could have went, or I couldn't have went to state, but I could have went further than I than I did in the one hundred. Mm-hmm. But I don't really like track, so I didn't really want to. You just run it because your dad wants <laughs> yeah. you to. Yeah, yeah. And then long jump and triple jump. Those shout always, out to Patrick. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> those always hurt my knees, so I didn't want to jump either. So and then the four by two. I don't remember what happened. I think I was sick, so okay. I didn't run it. Yeah, okay. that's what it was. And I'm getting sick. So they put in another. You end up getting sick because yeah. you don't want to <laughs> run. Um, CJ, do you enjoy track? No. No. I don't. I hate track because ever since I was little, whenever I was little, I ate like two burritos from McDonald's <laughs> and like okay. oatmeal. And that always food. sounds well. It always sounds like it. And then I ran right after that. So right after the, it was like a four hundred. It was like my first time running it. So like the as soon as I, the race was over, I ended up throwing up and it was disgusting. That's what my dad wants me to run. He wants me to run the 400, but that's that's not me. Guys, I'll never forget it, um, and I hate throwing up. Like, I hate it more than anything. Well, not more than anything, but I, I really dislike it. 
my mom made me, it was maybe, I was about y'all's age. My mom made me, it was in the summer, I was getting after it, lifting weights, running. But I had a huge hill by my house. I'd go run that hill consistently. Um, sprints up and down, up and down. Um, my mom made me this huge plate of uh, French toast. And I just crushed it, probably like five pieces. Um, and then I was feeling great, good. Jogged out to the... Um, Jogged out to the hill right after, started sprinting. After my third sprint, my stomach started turning a little bit, and you know how you have that feeling right before you throw up, where yeah, your tongue, every, yeah. your mouth like gets dry, and then you kind of get that little cold sweat that happens. So I remember getting back to my house and saying, "Oh no, oh no, oh no!" Getting to the bathroom and not being able to make it to the toilet, and just throwing up all over the bathroom floor and just laying there. <laughs> And my mom came in, and I'm sure she was worried, like, what the heck happened? And I said, I'm never... I didn't eat French toast for a while after that. But uh, sorry for that gross story. We just had to go ahead and drop that on, y'all. Okay, so we just kind of do track um, just to get in shape and, and to stay. But football's the main thing. Mm-hmm. And ex, you said no more basketball for you. Yeah, no more. Okay, what was the decision? You just wanted to focus on football or, or yeah. what was the deal? Yeah, I wanted to focus on football then. Because in basketball, I would have to practice year-round to stay good at it. Okay, but sure. Then, whenever football season would come around, I would have to practice extremely hard back whenever basketball yeah. came back around to get back to being where I was. Mm-hmm. So it was just it's harder keeping up with both sports. Sure. Well, what's, it's like some schools say well, we just want – our athletes doing one sport. Steel, you can do multiple sports, or mm-hmm. yeah, cool. It's just not like it. Like if they if they catch us playing basketball during football season, we're like we'll probably be in trouble. You're in trouble, yeah. Yeah, because like, I sprained my ankle. Uh, <laughs> nice. I think it was like two weeks before the season even started. Uh, for sophomore year. Oh, so- sophomore was like this year. Yeah. Okay. Playing back because I went to go dunk and yeah. then I like I was I was holding on the rim and I came down and somebody was under me. Yeah. And I rolled my ankle. Mm-hmm. And I was, I like I didn't. I didn't cry. Like I, I didn't cry because of the pain. But then I got home. My sister was like, "What are you gonna do because of football season?" And I just burst into tears. Oh I was like, yeah, <laughs> I was so upset. Sisters are good for that. Like putting you <laughs> putting you on blast like that. Um. Okay. Um. But you guys both had busy springs because you were going to some football camps. You know, you guys did. Uh, did you do Nike too? No, CJ, okay. Actually, you went to you went to Nike. Um, oh yeah, the Spark Combine. The Spark, yeah, yeah oh, Nike yeah, Spark yeah. Combine. Nike Spark Combines, one of the biggest combines um, in the country, and um, athletes from all over, you know, um, run their forty, do their um, shuttle, do their vertical, all that kind of stuff. And X, that's where you kind of burst onto the national scene. And what 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 did you do there to kind of get that attention? What was that like for you? Um. It was it was pretty cool. Really, my vertical is what got me. Yeah, I, it was forty one. Yeah. But say that again to the mics, so people can hear you. A forty one. Forty one, like a forty one, you'd be in the top in the NFL combine. That's insane. It was it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I would think so. Can you dunk? I hope you can like just throw down nasty yeah, jams. Of course. That's what's up. Okay, very nice. So you jump forty one, and then I remember like the. Who came in and interviewed Someone from Baylor came and interviewed you? Or what, what was the thing? Yeah, it was like a reporter from Baylor. Yeah. She, she had interviewed me. Yeah. And, and what was, was like, she What was she saying to you? Honestly, I don't remember. Stuff about the season coming up. Really? Yeah. That's really all it was. Okay. Um, but I remember as soon as you did that, all of a sudden, pop, 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 pop. I mean, the social media world went wild. Like, mm-hmm. this guy's a guy to look at. Um, and um, CJ, what about you? What, how, what was that spark experience like for you? It was different. It was a lot different than I've ever like that. I've never been to a camp like that. So yeah, I think the rating it was like eighty four to eighty six, something like that. Nice. In that area, so that's awesome. That's good. good. Start. Well, hire your brother too. I remember. <laughs> I remember we talked about that. Right hire than LG. Um, well, you also had the opportunity to catch at Elite Eleven when LG was at Elite Eleven in Jerry World. What was that experience like that for was, you? That was that was exciting for all of us we I told think him to come down there but he didn't want to come with us he so. no I thought you came yeah, I, I but you sat in the stands yeah. yeah I was in the stands yeah so I remember talking I, mean. I remember talking to your dad there and um Trent Dilfer sitting there talking to all the parents why and coaches and stuff why you you guys were getting ready uh anyway and your dad came out and said um pulled me aside and said this is your dad x um 
he said, I'm, I'm ready for you to get X to this thing. Um, and I said, oh, he will be. Trust me. He will be here very, very soon. Um, and he will be this year. Fellas, check him out. I guarantee the dude's going to be on the TV show this year. So uh, you'll be able to check out my boy, Xavier Martin. But anyway, I could tell I, I, I started getting excited about that. And then watching LG perform there, that was awesome because all the hard work we'd put into that, you know, weekly practices, doing all the same drills they went out there, really paid off for him. And, um, I mean, I'm sure there were dynamic receivers out there as well. What was that like for you, CJ? It, it was good seeing a lot of different, like, dynamic people. Yeah. I mean, Getting to see how they run routes and how they catch and all that. Well, you got to catch from other quarterbacks too, right? Mm-hmm. Any yeah. anybody to catch your eye that you were like, "Whoa, that dude can really spin it." Like, well, I got to catch for Kyler one time. How was that? It, it was nice. Yeah, it felt good. Okay, Me no lie, <laughs> no lie. Who throws a better ball, LG or Kyler Murray? Uh oh. Mm. LG's probably gonna listen to this, <laughs> but I want you to be truthful. I would say my brother, honestly. Mm. They got. It seemed like. It seemed like I had to wait for the ball to get there, and I like how whenever I first broke on my route and came around, it was already there from nice. LG. So yeah, I, that's what I, one thing I like better. Yeah, like I'm telling you, I, I was upset when LG didn't make the finals, and I think it was just because he was a little under recruited compared to some other guys. But spinning it wise and what he could do, I thought he was the top 18 quarterback in the country. Um, cool. So those are big experiences for you, and then you guys had the summer coming up. So we went to college camps, did all that kind of stuff. How was that experience like for you? That was, that was really fun for me. Where'd I, you go? What'd you do? I went to basically all the camps in the area, like Texas State, UTSA. There's a Rice camp they held here. Yeah, I they remember. They had mm-hmm. like three different colleges or four different colleges there. Mm-hmm. And they were that was all in like one week. So like I went to camps back to back and it was it Getting was tiring, after it. it was fun. Yeah. Um, what was there one of the camps where – who ran a really good camp? What do you uh, think? I'd say Texas State and Houston. Yeah. Houston was one of the funnest camps I went to. Houston's and, on the come up, too. Yeah. They're looking I, I really, really, really nice. I really liked it there. Yeah. That's and then, a fun offense. I like Texas State, too, because I liked all the coaches in there. Because my sure. brother was there, too, helping out at the camp. So. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah. What about you, X? Um... I really went to all the camps that he went to, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Well, did you did you go to a Texas Tech camp or? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. How was that experience for you? It really, it was good. I didn't really like, I didn't really like show out back then. Okay. LG was really the one showing out. No. Oh camp. no. I'm talking about L- LG had already committed though, right? At yeah, that he point. Was already at Texas yeah. State. Yeah. He was already. No, I'm talking about this past summer. Oh, this past. Summer? This past summer. Yeah. Yeah. It was really good. Uh, they had clocked me. Like I know it was hand time, but they clocked me out of four two nine forty. That's like Deion Sanders type stuff. <laughs> and they were like real, they were real excited about that. Sure. And then we, me and CJ, we would throw together every play. Good. Or every time we do one on one. Very smart. And very smart. I would like hit him in the very back of the end zone. Oh what? Like, it was. I ran like a post, and uh-huh. he threw it to like literally the very back of the end zone. Yeah. And I ended up like having to dive and catch it. It was crazy. Like they all got live. If you guys have a chance, go on to YouTube. If you, I mean, all you guys search is Xavier Martin, like Yale Illinois Quarterback Academy, or go on to my go on to my podcast website. Uh, I mean, my uh, YouTube channel, and you're gonna have an opportunity to watch Xavier do a play action fake pass. Was it to you? I th- we were over at um, at Lemon at Linhoff Stadium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to say the ball traveled like what was it? A 65-yard bomb, but some guys when they throw a 65-yard pass, the ball's like kind of like a two ball, like it doesn't get a lot of height on it. Mm-hmm. When you threw that ball, it looked like you punted it. I mean, it was so high that would be almost kind of intimidating for a receiver. Like you're just running and you see this thing just go higher and higher and it's falling down. And I mean, you got to be special to be able. I I couldn't catch balls like that. I think every every Thursday we do this one thing. Um, where it's just like kick the field and we work on punting sure. and whatnot. So then there's one part where we just take a safety. Mm-hmm. So I just run around the back of the end zone and then I had to get to waste time. Yeah. And then I throw the ball as far as I can every time. And I've got up to like 73 yards now. Wow. That's, great. That's further than some NFL guys. I, fi- I think the f- we used to uh, in college when we threw deep throws, um, when we get in quarterback meetings, we used to measure those out. Like we'd read the, read the, um, 
the yard markers to see who was throwing it the furthest. I think the furthest I ever threw, like in a in a game or in a game or in a game practice type situation, was like 66, 67. Or, that was like in my prime, Yale Vinoy, big and dieseled up and strong as I ever was. And like that's, but that was as as, as topped out as I can get. So I always got respect for dudes like you who can just air that thing out. Because that's the thing, like people look at you and um, they're gonna think, oh, obviously he's a really good runner, and they don't understand that, like you're one of the best passers in Texas. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. Like, you get the ball out so quickly, you throw such a tight ball, you're so accurate with it. Um, so, uh, I mean, absolutely true dual threat. Okay, so you kill it at Texas Tech. Do they offer you at that point, or they offered you later, or what was that all about? Well, I talked to Coach Jinx on the phone, and they told me they were going to offer me. Just don't say anything until I went up to their school, and they offered me whenever I went up to Lubbock. What's the experience like at Lubbock? Did you like it? Yeah, I loved it. It was it was really cool. Then, uh, since I had already had friends who were committed there, then yeah, um, Justin Stockton, I saw him there. I saw Terrence Steele there. Nice. And then, like the we don't. Whenever I get up there, we want to stay in dorms. They have apartments for us already. Uh-huh. So it was just a great experience. Uh, um, what, what are the facilities like there? They were nice. They are really nice. Yeah. Their weight room's really big. They're, um, I didn't really, I didn't get to see their locker room, but they're building a new indoor facility right now. Nice. It's pretty cool. And they're an Under Armour school, right? Under, under Armour? Yeah, Under Armour. Yeah, Under Armour. Yeah, Armour. Texas Tech's always coming out in some pretty fly stuff. Yeah. I like uh, I like the way that program said it. So then you decided, hey, I'm going to make this decision to, to commit to Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. That's pretty awesome, man. That's big boy stuff, Big Twelve, and I mean, obviously your your family was had what the how they react. My mom wanted me to do it already, so did my dad. Cause yeah, because there was only one. The only other school in Texas that didn't have a quarterback commit was um, Texas, mm-hmm. and then so I knew I wanted to stay in Texas eventually. So. Yeah, and we talked. You kind of wanted to just just to be kind of closer to home, or yeah, yeah cool. Um, and did. Uh, so you were up at school and you just kind of met with the coaches, or did you get to talk to Coach Kingsbury or Coach Jinks, or what? You what? You when you said that you committed to the school, how did, how did that go? Oh, I had I was talking to Coach Linhoff about it. Gotcha. And then oh, and he told them or something, no, or I eventually called them oh, later cool. that day. It was gotcha. probably like three weeks, four weeks after I'd already got offered. Did they go crazy in the background, like on the phone, or yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. They were pretty excited. They were yeah. like. Oh, man, we're gonna do. We're about to do big things. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury, dude, I dig the guy's style. Any coach that's got six pack abs, um, you know he's doing his thing. Uh, cool, man. So you made that decision to uh, um, to uh, guns up Texas Tech. That's big time. So it kind of made it. I mean, you don't have that pressure of of right. I mean, some of the like remember Manny and uh, LG. They both. Uh, committed early as well i think kind of you don't have to worry about the pressures of of the recruiting process kind of as you go along with it uh, did it, a weight kind of feel lifted for you or yeah so now i could just work i could focus on what i need to do to get better as a quarterback and st- yeah, steal football and all that yeah. so what did um oh you get you came out and got both you guys came out and you got training with me during the summer what else did, what else were you doing you just just crushing the weight room what 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 else were you working on this summer, I honestly didn't even hit the weight room that much. Really? Yeah. Okay. I would, I'll, whenever they would be in the weight room, I'd be outside working on footwork. Nice. And stuff like that. Yeah, very good. Well, it definitely shows. So then uh, I'm sure you guys were all pumped up about the season coming up. This season, um, what were the thoughts like when you when you were about to start? Um, I knew that we were going to be, I thought, because our defense is really, really good against us. Like, so I didn't know how. It always is. Like, yeah. y'all, like, when I've seen you guys in scrimmages, your defense looks better than the offense, but. Y'all's defense is good. Yeah. I mean, they're really good. And defense is always going to be – because they see y'all's plays all the time. Mm-hmm. They know the personnel. I used to hate going against our – now, we had a really good defense in college, but I couldn't move the ball on them dudes. Like, Neither I, can it, we. That's why I wasn't so sure how tough. our offense was going to be because yeah. we couldn't do anything against our defense. Yeah, so. it's difficult. Um, but that's good to have a good defense, obviously. Um, okay, so – what? Like, do you guys get together and like have a team goal of, of the things you want to accomplish? Is it just kind of, hey, we're good, we're just going to go make it happen? What I mean, I know some teams that have set goals that they're trying to meet. What what's it? What's the culture like over there for you guys? Mm, I think it's more so by like position because we have a record wall. Yeah, and that's what we all that's what we all strive. Kind of like, strive to do. Yeah. What's like what's on the record wall? 
Um, the for quarterbacks, there's passing completions, passing yards. Who's at the top of those? Tommy's at the top of passing completions. Mm -hmm. No, LG is, mm -hmm. and then he's at the top of passing yards. Tommy's at the top of passing touchdowns, and then uh, there's. So both both Division One yeah. quarterbacks at the top of that list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about what about receiver wise over there? For receiving, they have like receptions in the game. Okay. The season. And receptions overall, and receiving yards and all that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the receiving yards and the receptions in the season. I got a feeling C.J. Williams is going to be at the top of a couple of those lists <laughs> before it's all said and done. Okay, so you guys are having a great year, obviously. What's what has? What do you think so far? The most has been the most. You really haven't had a lot of adversity, but um, maybe. Yeah, maybe just I made the toughest thing so far this year. Is that you're just beating everybody so bad, just trying to stay focused? What's what's the what's the deal? Mm, I say just trying to keep everyone focused. Yeah, yeah. keep keep like keep a level head about themselves. And that can be tough good. sometimes. Yeah, right. Yeah, kind of keeping everyone on the same page and um, and yeah, and keeping that level head because what will happen is you go in the playoffs and you and you run up against someone that's tough. And you haven't had that level head, and all of a sudden you might not might not react as as um, I guess as well as you could have. Um, cool. And like, what are we thinking on the year, guys? We going to win state or what? Of course. Yeah. That's what nothing I'm talking less. about. That's nothing less. And now you guys play what six playoff games until you the five, and then the six one is state. Six ones a state championship. Yeah. Where do you guys know where you're playing this year? Where the state championship would be? Houston. Houston Reliant, mm -hmm. uh, our NRG or whatever. Oh, man, when I saw you guys last year, that is such an awesome stadium to go play in. You yeah. guys are high school football players. For us, <clears throat> when I was in high school, we we were supposed to go next door. Next door, the, you know, the um, Astrodome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Astrodome was like trash compared to <laughs> NRG now. Cool. So we're shooting for a state championship. Awesome. Real quick, let's talk about some college football. Your predictions on... Um, what's gonna what's gonna shape up in the final four of um, the playoff uh, the playoff matchups and who's gonna make it to the finals and who your winner is gonna be? I think Baylor wins it all. X starts it off with Baylor winning it all. Okay, I'm writing this down. It says Baylor wins it all, but who else is in the final four with them? Ohio State. Okay. Um. LSU. Mm-hmm. And I don't know another one. Um, T no, TCU, probably not. Um, Clemson, maybe? Or? Yeah, Clemson. Clemson. I mean, that's that's kind of the top three anyway. What is it, even with Baylor's quarterback going down with a broken neck? I think, yeah. Because yeah. they got Jared Stidham there, who's really good LG's still. age. I mean, um, freshman, and he think he can – that's big time stuff for a freshman to win a national yeah. championship. Who are they going to play in the national championship game? Baylor, out of Ohio State, LSU, or Clemson? Hopefully, Ohio State, because I made a bet on it. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, so you made a bet on Baylor, Ohio State, um, and what do you think the score is going to be? Um, thirty-five twenty-six. That's actually a low-scoring game for Baylor. Baylor normally averages like 100 points a yeah. game. <laughs> Crazy. Um, 35 to 26, Ohio, I mean Baylor over Ohio State. CJ, what do you got, dude? I say Baylor. Baylor winning it? Yeah. Dang, you guys are Baylor Bear fans, huh? Oh, no, I hate Baylor. Oh, hate Baylor. Yeah, you, I mean, you're a Texas Tech fan, obviously. <laughs> okay, Baylor over who? Uh, Ohio State. I'm looking at like CJ right we've, now. Like, we've already talked about yeah. this. Okay, yeah. Ohio State. Who are the other two teams in the finals? Uh, I could see it, Alabama mm -hmm. or LSU because that's my team. If LSU came and said, CJ Williams, we want you to be a tiger, <laughs> would you jump all over that or what? It's possible. What? Are, are you trying to stay in Texas too, or what? Yeah, I kind of want to stay close to home. Oh, okay, I got you, I got you. Or because they 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 like to run the ball a lot more. Ah, uh, true, true that. Which is crazy because they get 
they get big time quarterbacks like Brandon Harris was a huge yeah. guy, a huge deal. And they have receivers like Odell and Jarvis Landry and all of them. So. Yeah, and yeah, all, all those guys go to the league too. But yeah, you're right; they just don't throw the ball as much. Yeah. Okay, so both you guys trying to stay in Texas. Okay, we got Baylor winning for both of you guys. Name one college receiver you really love watching, and X, you name one college quarterback you really love watching right now. Is it all time or just like this, this year? This year. This year, I have to say uh, Reynolds, Josh Reynolds, or Christian Kirk from A and M. Christian Kirk from again A and M's loaded. They got Ricky yeah. Seals Jones and all sorts of Christian Kirk A and M wide receiver. They're tossing the ball around. Kyler you? Murray. Kyler Murray. Yeah. yeah. He's a beast. He's it's very, very exciting to watch. He's, I'm telling you, man. A and M with these with these dynamic quarterbacks like Johnny Manziel, it make it it makes it fun to watch, dude. No doubt about it. Kind of like you two guys, make it fun <laughs> to watch. Um, I plan on being, uh, I guess, in about seven weeks in uh, in Houston for your state championship game. Real quick, let's talk about NFL. Who we got playing in the Super Bowl? Packers. All right, I picked them as well. Uh, first of all, I picked Packers, Patriots, Packers winning. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Copier. He just copied me. <laughs> okay, what's the score? Um, 28 to 20. What you got, CJ? I don't even watch NFL, honestly. Really? I never watch NFL. You know, college football is my favorite. Uh, and obviously, since I'm coaching a lot of high school guys, I love high school football. But high school and college football, I mean, I watch NFL ball, but it, I'm not as passionate about it as I am a, with this high school college and college. College so, so much more big time plays. It's like more, it's so much yeah, more exciting. It's like, exciting, the right? Miami game yesterday. Yeah. Oh, it's huge. They had eight laterals. Yeah. In the last six I still seconds. haven't seen that play. Was it pretty awesome? It was, it was crazy. crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. I, I love stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, I love that. There's the par- there's a lot of parody in college football and you got the crazy fans you got the band you got the cheerleaders you got all that there's just nothing nothing like it man it's pretty exciting and uh when did you guys know that college football was something that you wanted i was in sixth grade i wanted to go to notre dame that was my big like dream at that time um when when did you guys know that you wanted to play college football i would say probably Around seventh, eighth grade, like middle school. What was the pull for it? Like what? Why? Because my my favorite player being like DeAnthony. So sure. I, like I saw all the explosive plays he had as yeah. a freshman being in college, and I just saw how like how many uniform combinations they have, especially. So. Yeah, you guys are all about those uni combinations, huh? Yeah. Well, I might have been tenth grade when I finally decided because I I didn't know if I wanted to play football. Wow, isn't that crazy? Yeah, you didn't even know if you want to play football. Yeah. Okay, well, what was the decision? Why, why? What made you decide, yeah, I want to play football? Just how much fun I had around all my friends. And sure. How much time I spent into it. There's like, it, I'm, it has to pay off now. Yeah. That's, you know, what's the fun thing is I, ta- I talked to guys who used to play or play now. And, dude, I don't remember all the touchdowns. I don't remember all the wins. I don't remember all the loss. I don't remember all that stuff. But what I do remember and what you guys will remember is that brotherhood and that camaraderie that you guys have. You'll remember, like, all the fun stuff, like, in the locker room, on the road trips, like, this bonding. And it even gets more intense when you get to college because you're living with these people, you know, all the time. And, and you're going through the same experiences. Some of you guys are away from home and kind of bonding with and, and all that. And that's why I love football, dude. It's the ultimate brotherhood. Um, okay, so we're college. College is the end goal with these guys. Awesome, guys. Um, I'm sure I'm leaving something out, but uh, that was pretty cool. Did you guys have a good time? Yeah. Yeah. Fun. We'll have to have you on again. We'll have to have you on again after we win a state championship this year. Of course. And we'll, uh, we'll get you guys on um, before you get too big time. Before you get too big time for this podcast. Uh, any final words? Any words? Okay, how about this? Any words of wisdom for young QBs and young re- young receivers. When I say that, I'm thinking like elementary, middle schools, on the come up. Any good advice, words of wisdom for them? CJ, start it up. I would say anything that you're working on right now will end up paying off and then as you get older. Yeah, so that hard, that's why I, I preach to my guys. Hard work 
if you're working hard at whatever, at whatever you're doing, but say it's football, if you're working hard and working smart, you will be rewarded. It is going to pay off in some way. It might not be paid off when you want it, exactly when you pay off, but it is going to be paid off in some way. Yeah. X, all my young quarterbacks, they love Xavier Martin. Xavier Martin, oh, we saw Xavier Martin. Man, we love him. We love him. We love him. I can't wait to hear him on the podcast, all that kind of stuff. What words of wisdom do you guys got for those guys? Always work on footwork. Even though footwork is probably the most boring, hateful thing ever, yep. it'll pay off. It will. Extremely. Manny Harris talks about that, why he thinks he didn't, um, when he went to like uh, Elite 11 and, and camps like that, um, he said the the one thing that separated him kind of from the Kyler Murrays and Jared Stidhams and all those kind of guys is is the footwork. And you're right, it's, it's not the most fun thing to do. Um, and it does require a lot of concentration, and it is kind of tough. But, um, dude, the dudes who can do it and do it well. I have great footwork. Oh, man, they're so special. But, it, 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 man, it carries over that game where they just look like they're – they look like they're moving so fast and the defense is in slow motion. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Um, well, you guys have been so much fun to watch since – you know, your freshman year getting to know you. And, uh, you know, obviously we're going to train some more and, and get you guys ready. But um, it's been a blast watching you so far this year. I'm excited for you guys and what the future holds. And how about this? If we win state this year, we get you guys back on. And we'll, yeah, we'll really, we'll really talk about what that whole experience is like for you. Sounds great. Awesome. Good luck in the playoffs, guys. We'll see y'all next week. All right, spinners, that's it. I want to thank my guest, Steel High School QB Xavier Martin and wide receiver CJ Williams for joining me today. Don't miss your chance to watch these guys play this year. They are a very special group, and if I had to bet on it, you'll see some of these Steel Knights in the NFL in the next five to seven years. Spinning It Swag will be available to purchase soon. We'll have t-shirts, hats, performance bracelets, and much, much more available through my website as well as through all my other social media outlets. Become a part of the Spinning Squad and have the opportunity to wear some of the same products that our YV QB Academy quarterbacks wear in practice and in games. On the docket for the next couple weeks, I've got a recruiting scout for the Army All-American Combine, a former D1 defensive lineman, a former D1 All-American linebacker, an offensive coordinator from a high school in the San Antonio area, as well as some of the top high school QBs in San Antonio, and in some cases, in the entire state of Texas. If you want to know more about my quarterback academy or you're interested in training with us, you can find me at www.yvqbacademy.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Snapchat. If you're interested in being one of our sponsors, you can contact me through my website. See y'all next week.